Hi there, and welcome to this web lecture on behavioral research methods. My name is Peter Ruiten, and today we will be talking about thematic analysis. Have you ever wondered what you could do with textual data? How do you analyze something that is not numerical anyway? In today's lecture, we will be looking at the most often used method of analyzing qualitative data. I will first briefly describe what thematic analysis is. After this, I will show you the difference between codes and themes, the most important elements in thematic analysis. And finally, I will show you two different approaches for thematic analysis, content analysis and grounded theory. So what is thematic analysis? Well, we can define this as a process of combining codes into themes that answer the question, what is really going on here? As such, a thematic analysis answers a qualitative research question. You can see that there are two important elements, codes and themes. Codes can be seen as the shortest possible summary of snippets of your data. So to make a code, you summarize a sentence or a part of a sentence in one or multiple words. And themes can be seen as the answer to your research question, the answer to the question, what is really going on here? When you start coding your data, there are a few important things to take into account. The first one is that you should be specific and not abstract. This means that when you summarize your data, you should make sure that the content is still in there. So when a person gives a positive evaluation or a positive argument, write down the content of that argument and not just that it is a positive argument. Next, it is important that you give equal attention to all your data. You do not yet know what is, uh, what is going to be important and that is why you have to code all your data equally. And finally, I want to give you a tip. Use IDs to identify your codes. If you have a large set of data, then you will have a lot of different codes. And if you give them ideas, it makes them easier for you to find them later on in the analytic process. The process of going from codes into themes is a very difficult one. And I'm going to give you a few components that are uh, important to understand. First, you should look at codes that reflect similar things or share an explanation. Codes that all describe positive evaluations could, come, uh, could end up in a certain theme or in multiple themes if there are categories of this positive evaluation. Um, it is important to realize that not all codes should be used and codes can be linked to multiple themes. So one code could be related to multiple different answers to your question or some of your codes will not be used in any of your themes at all. And finally, if you see codes that appear very often, they indicate an importance. So if a person gives you a lot of positive arguments, then possibly he wants to tell you that he's very happy about the situation you're asking them about. Let me show you how you can make codes from your data and how you can combine those codes into themes. We start with our data. For example, a transcript from an interview about a person's opinion of this course and summarize answers of parts in two codes. When asked what he thinks of it, he may say he finds the course very interesting. The interviewer could then have asked a follow-up question about why this is the case. His answer could be related to the lectures that are in his view very engaging. After another follow-up question, he could say that he likes the fact that he knows the teacher. From these codes, we could generate themes. A first theme that could easily be spotted is this one. He is positive about the content of the course. A second theme focuses on the teacher and states the importance of being a familiar person. As I already told you, themes can be seen as answers to a question. So we need to rewrite them a bit to be phrased as such. The first one could, for example, be rephrased into the content is appreciated which is an answer to the question why a person likes this course. The second one could be rephrased into the teacher needs to be known, which could be an answer to the question about what is important for a person to like this course. As you can see, these themes are related to each other, so we can connect them. These connections are an easy way of visualizing which themes are connected to each other. There are two different approaches of doing a thematic analysis. 
These approaches are called content analysis and grounded theory. In content analysis, we test a hypothesis based on what we call inductive coding. Recall that induction means collecting data in the empirical world to test a theory that you already came up with. As such, we collect data to test this theory before we do our thematic analysis. In grounded theory, we allow new theories to develop based on deductive coding. Recall that deduction means collecting data in the empirical world to develop new theories. And as such, we try to become grounded in the data to understand what is really going on. Let me give you an example of how these two approaches to thematic analysis work. First, content analysis. This analysis starts with a theory or an idea. With this idea in mind, we collect some data and test whether this data supports your theory. It could either give support or not. After this, we can draw our conclusions and write them down in a report. The other approach is grounded theory. In this case, we do not start with a theory, but with collecting data. After a careful analysis of this data, a new theory could start developing. Now comes the interesting part. With this theory, we go back in the data in an attempt to find evidence against this theory. If we do, we can either reject or adjust this theory. This process continues until we reach a point when we cannot disprove the theory with the data we collected. At this point, we can write our new theory in a research report. This analysis is used for analyzing textual or qualitative data. More information on how to analyze numerical or quantitative data is given in the web lecture on statistical analysis. So to wrap up this lecture, when we perform a thematic analysis, we generate codes that help us organize our textual data in a structured way. After this, we combine these codes and generate themes to find answers to a specific question. And the process of a thematic analysis can follow both deductive and inductive approaches. And that concludes today's lecture on thematic analysis. I hope you enjoyed it and see you again next time.